Hello there, friends. Today we're gonna learn a bit about Canvas. So if you've never used Canvas before, and you're like me, and I've never used it before for like one or two years, then I highly recommend you staying and learning a bit about it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with learning basic shapes. We're gonna learn about doing circles and squares. And at the end, we are also gonna do this small drawing app here, which is not spectacular, but hey, it's pretty cool. So as you can see, if I draw with my mouse, Wow, that's a great head right there. <laughs> we can draw a nice smile, a body here, just like that. Big booty and Kim Kardashian right there. All right, so this is simple. You can also work on this, add more to it, uh, change the stroke, how big it is, the colors, and all the other good things. So I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. So let's get started. I also wanna thank you guys. We re reached 1,000 subscribers. Um, I started uh, doing YouTube more seriously in October and I cannot believe we reached it already. So that's super awesome. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I also got this, which kind of looks like, a, it's not a, a sex toy if you thought, but it's a microphone stand that I, that I can just move around like so. So that's cool. Because previously I used toilet paper. I'm not even joking. I just put the toilet paper on top of the microphone. Anyway, <laughs> so Canvas. What's up with Canvas? And the only thing I did here is just add the border to this so we can easily see what that Canvas is. So we just have this Canvas and I'm gonna add an ID here to Canvas as well just because I added this like so. You, you can probably not use, you, you probably don't need an ID, but hey, mine as well. All right, so that's all we have. A script tag, a CSS, and just a HTML tag. Uh, element called canvas. So, well, where do, do the, all the graphics and things go? Well, you can imagine that canvas is kind of like an artboard that you can draw on. So you don't really need any other elements in your HTML. So you can add a lot of um, graphics on top of it, either it be 2D or 3D, doesn't really matter. You can place them on top of each other. There's nothing you can really do in CSS to position things. So all, everything needs to be generated in JavaScript. So yeah, um, if you want to add, let's just visualize this first. How does this look now? Oh, well, this is the finished one. This is what we have. So it's just a box, okay? A simple, simple box. Now we can add a height to this here, but again, the problem is uh, if we add a height here, it's basically going to zoom in our artboard and that's just going to pixelate everything. So we don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is programmatically do the height and the width in JavaScript. All right. So we don't need neither HTML or CSS for this, just JavaScript. So let's go into our JavaScript. I'm going to make a bit more space here and I'm just going to do the basics and then we are going to start on the drawing app. So what we need to do is, well, let's do a window dot add event listener and we're going to do, let me close, close this for more space and let's just do on load. Uh, we're just going to call this function here, uh, which is going to execute our canvas. So here let's do a console log and we're going to say hello. So what this is gonna do is just basically, hey, when the document is ready, then it's gonna execute this script, all right? So that's all it does. As you can see, we have the hello there, and that's perfect. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to get the element. So we need to get the canvas. And to do that, we're just gonna say const canvas. So we're gonna create a variable here, and we're gonna say document.query selector. I cannot see, there we go. And we're gonna say canvas, like so. Great, so that gets the canvas. Now, another thing we need to do is to work inside the canvas. So we need to actually define what in what context we're working in. So is it a 2D or a 3D? So we need to specifically write what kind of environment we're working in. So to do that, all we have to do is just say context. So we're gonna create another variable called context. I'm gonna do a short version here like ctx, but you can name it com context if you want. But we're going to do this because on th this context element, we're going to add different things like, hey, I want a square on this context, okay? I want a circle, I want whatever you want, okay? So that's why I did the short uh, notation here. And you're going to see why in just a minute. So here, all we have to do is just get the canvas from up here. And all we have to do is say get context 
get context like so. And we need to say either 2D, 3D. So we're going to say 2D here like so. All right, great. So that's all we need. Now, to programmatically uh, resize this, what we can do is, let's say, resizing here, resizing like so. Uh, what we can do, well, we can create a function for this. So, but let's keep it simple for now. I'm just going to say canvas dot height like so is equal to window dot inner height. So we're just going to get the height from our window like so. So it's going to be the same size. And to get the width, all we have to do is say canvas dot width is equal to window dot inner width. There we go. So it's going to be the same size as our screen like so. If you want to do now, the problem here is if we resize this, it's it's not going to keep its size. So if you want to keep its size, what you can do is just add this in a function and then do add event listener on the window like so. And on resize, you can execute this function. So every time you resize, it's going to update the height and width if you want. So that's a way you can do that. But for this one, we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to change it like so. But I thought I'd let you know if you want to build upon this and make it way better than mine. Good. All right. So we have this. So we can start off by actually, I'm going to show you a few shapes and different things you can do. So to do a shape, uh, what we can do is just, again, we can get this context that we have up here. So we can write context like so. And then we, we can add dots to this. And then you have a lot of different um, things you can do in this context. So for now, let's just do a fill rect, all right? So this is a rectangle, basically. And the way this works, it has four parameters. It's going to be the position, so x and y, and the height and width to this. So um, this the first two is kind of kind of going to work like the position absolute in CSS, right? So if you want to do top 10, then it's going to be 10 from the top. So if we do, let's say 50 and 50 here, and then let's give a size of 200 and 200. Let's save this. As you can see, we have a square. So if we move this up to 100, as you can see, it's going to move 100 from X and it's 50 from Y. So 100 is going to move it down just like so. You can make this wider, bigger. Let's go 500. It's going to make it taller. So you have X, Y, the position. You have the width and you have the height. So that's how you do a, a square. Now, you can also uh, do a lot more here. You can change the colors. If you want, you can just have a stroke on this. So if you do stroke rectangle, then you're only going to have the line like so. Good. So we can also change the uh, color on this if we want, just by writing ctx dot stroke style like so, and we can set this equal to something like red. But you're gonna see that this is not gonna work like so. It doesn't change to red. Well, that's because um, this kind of goes down from up to down. So we need to define it beforehand like so. As you can see, red, and then it works. Because what we can do is we can, for example, uh, duplicate this again, like so. Let's just move it to 200 and 200. And then we can modify the style here again. So it's going to change. So make sure it's on top always, uh, because the next one is going to have effect on the bottom one here. Also change the line width if you want. So just ctx.line width just the way it sounds. We can set this to five if we want. And as you can see, everything gets thicker. So again, if you want to change this one up again, you can just uh, do it down here. So before we create the other one, we can change this to two or something, as you can see, like so. So another cool thing we can do is draw lines. So if you want custom lines that are going to go from left, right, not really a rectangle. So just kind of move wherever you want is we can use this. So we can write ctx dot begin path, which all it's going to do is basically 
uh, if we don't add this, then all the lines are going to be connected. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to show you in one bit what this does. So we're going to add begin path and then we're going to say ctx.move to, uh, let's just say 100 and 100, uh, which is basically going to be just the starting position. So if you remember on a rectangle, we had the X and Y position. So where we want the, the drawing to start. So you can imagine move to is basically just like you're picking up your pen and moving to a certain position without drawing. Okay. You're not trying anything. You're just putting the position somewhere. So that's exactly what we're doing here. We're lifting up our pen and we're putting it at a hundred hundred. So somewhere around here. And from here we can draw a line. So to do that, all we have to do is say ctx.line2, like so, so, and so if we want to draw like a straight line like this, let's just do uh, 200 here and the y we're going to keep 100, okay, because we started here, so we want to just go this way 200. So if we save this, uh, nothing's going to happen yet because we have to add a fill to this. So we're going to write ctx.fill, like so. Uh, excuse me, stroke, like so. And there we go, we have the line right there. Now, if we can also draw it down, so if we copy this and paste it down here, let's say from this position, I wanna go down 50. So there you go, we, are, we went down 50. And we can also, hey, what if we were done and we just want these lines to connect? So for that, we can do ctx.close path, like so which is basically just going to connect uh, the remaining path here. All right, so here we have our resizing done and we're going to need some specific variables. Actually, I think only we need one. So we're going to say uh, variables here and all we need is something called painting, which we're going to set to false initially. So we need to know when we are pressing down and when we are not pressing down, if we should draw or if we should not draw. So we have our variables here and down here, we're going to need some event listeners, listeners. So these are going to listen to basically, Hey, when we have our mouse down, we want certain things to happen. When our mouse is up, we don't want to draw and all the other good stuff. So here we're going to start off with our first function before we go into our event listeners. So one is going to be called a uh, function start position. All right. Like so. And this is basically all it's going to do is going to say painting is equal to true. All right. So when we click, it's going to turn to true. Then we need one when it's finished. So we're going to say function end position or finished position. is going to be painting is equal to false. Like so. All right. Hit save on this. And here down at, in our event listeners, we can do three. So we need a canvas dot add event listener on mouse move, which we don't have right now. So when, when it moves, we want to actually draw. So we're going to create another one for that. So to do the starting position, we're going to do mouse down. All right. So when we click down, it's going to set the painting to true. So it knows it's painting and we're going to just put the function here. So start position like so I'm going to make this a bit bigger like so. Uh, and then we need, we can duplicate this. We can do mouse up like so. And here we can do the finish position like so. All right. So every time we click down, the painting becomes true. Whenever we lift up our mouse, the painting is going to become false basically. So that's all we need there. Good. So now we can do the last one, which is going to be called mouse move. So every time our mouse moves, uh, we can execute something called paint or draw actually draw maybe is better fitting. So down here, we're going to say function draw. We're going to add an event to this, uh, because we're going to need certain things. Um, so here we can do CTX. Let's set up the way actually, before we do that, we can add an if statement and check if we're drawing or not. So to do that, we're going to say, if we're not drawing or painting, because we said painting here, whatever, <laughs> then we can return. So basically if 
we're not holding down the mouse, this is just going to return. It's not going to be doing anything. All right. Hit save. And then down here, we can set some certain um, styles to our, our pen. So we can do ctx.line width is equal. Let's put it to 10. So it's a bit bigger. We can do line cap, which is just basically going to make our line round. It's kind of like a circle. So we can do round here. You're going to see this in just a second. All right, good. So what else do we need to do? How do we start drawing the line? Well, we can do ctx.line2, like so. And here, well, where do we want the line to go to? Well, we want the line to go to uh, on where basically where our mouse is. So how do we get that? Well, we can do it with the event here. So we can say e dot client x is going to be our x and e dot client y is going to be the y position of the mouse. So there we go. Hit save on this. Good. Uh, one thing that we need to do is add a stroke to this. So ctx dot stroke so we can visualize this. And as you can see, when I hold down, it's going to draw a beautiful line. Now, the problem is, <laughs> as you can see, after we let go and we click, it's going to jump right there again. So we're going to also fix that in just a bit. So again, that's, that's the reason why you do the begin path, uh, because if you don't do that, then everything is just going to stick to one big line. So what we need to do is say CTX dot begin path like so. Then we're going to say ctx dot move to, and we're going to say e dot client x and e dot client y, like so. So right now we have these dots, and I messed up here. Hit save again, and there we go. We have a nice line, and it's still going to jump. So to fix that, what we need to do is after we finish, so after we lift up our pen, this finish position is going to execute. So what we can do is say ctx dot begin path here again, which is going to reset. So we can draw multiple times like so. There we go. Now another small issue we have is when we click, we don't get anything, only if we drag a bit, like so. To fix that, you can go up here, and at the start position, we can just call the draw function again and put the event in here. And also, we need to add the event here. So if we save this, and boom, we can also do dots now, and we can draw lines as well. So there we go. That's it, quite simple, nothing too, too crazy. Um, you can also add variables to this, so you can separate it from the function if you want to build something even better. And you can add, let's say, 20 here, which is going to make it thicker like so. Uh, you can change the ctx dot, uh, what is it called? Oh my god. The stroke style, and you can change this to red, or you can change to whatever color you want. You can have maybe buttons or something uh, stuck here, and then you can uh, maybe an input slider or something that changes the size of the um, width here. And you can also have a, a few buttons or something to select colors. Now you can also, I mean, you can remove the begin path and the move to, it's still going to work for you. It's just going to be a bit more pixelated. So the only reason we added this is to just begin a new path. So basically a new small circle like that. And then we just update the position. We move it to here. This is going to give it a bit of a smoother kind of line here, like so. So thank you very much again. Please drop a subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Hopefully I made you become a bit more creative. And I'll see you very soon. Peace.